Welcome to the shed. I'm Sid, Mackie's on the camera. And today we're gonna to be learning how to do an air can service on a Fox shock. This is actually fun. Okay, I didn't expect that to happen. For this task, you'll need a shock pump, Allen keys to remove the shock from your bike, slicoleum or slick honey, a pokey tool, always a pokey tool, a rebuild kit from Fox, and paper towels and rubbing alcohol or non-chlorinated brake cleaner. Why would you want to do a can service? I'm assuming because your shock feels like it's yeah. essentially the same reason that you do a lower service. Rebuild on a fork, yeah. Yeah, you're just, you're, you're supposed to do them every X number of times. Every 40 hours or something? We'll look it up hours. and put it in text on the screen. I feel like we at least have gotten used to the idea of having to do a lower service. Two times a year. A yeah, but we have never really done a shock can service. No, we usually let someone else do it for us. So we are venturing into uncharted waters for you guys, but according to the internet, it's not that hard. Should we start by removing the shock? Good plan. So this is the bike that Mackie has spent the most time on this past year. It is the bike that he did his Everesting attempt on, which was almost 18 hours of riding on dirt, 33,000 feet of climbing, as well as 33,000 feet of descending, because it turns out what goes up must come down. We know that 33,000 feet is more than the height of Everest, but He's an overachiever. But because of that, my poor shock probably needs a little bit of. Well, yeah, I mean that and all of the training that you did leading up to it on that bike. It's dirty. So as usual, it ain't broke till it's clean and broke. <laughs> you learn nothing else from this channel, <laughs> but that's not really broke. Yet, if I left it alone for another couple years, it probably would be. Right, I mean, that's the thing is, I think a lot of people expect their bike components to last for a really long time because of how expensive they are, but. Well, they will, but they just require maintenance. Just right, like, yeah, it's not last for a long time without like fussing. It'd be like assuming that like, oh, because you bought an expensive car, you never have to check Do the oil, oil change. or. Yeah, and I will say that like bike components are also built to be very light, so they don't have the durability of like dirt bike componentry. Like we also ride a little bit of dirt bikes and I'm sure if you're racing motocross or something at a very high level, you're replacing stuff all the time. But for the more casual dirt bike rider, you can get away with a lot that you can't even as a casual rider on mountain bikes. Okay, where do we begin? The first thing you're gonna do is clamp it into the vise. You have cat hair everywhere, I don't understand why. This part is used to being clamped. Yep. That's its job, basically. This looks like a single piece. Like I don't feel super confident about taking it apart. <laughs> I promise you can. Like if this like jumped out at me in the woods, I would be like, I shouldn't take you apart. <laughs> Do you want to guess what the first step is? I take the air out. Yep. Yeah, I mean, I can get that but far. What? Record the air pressure. Yes. Okay, I always forget that step. That's why Mackie <laughs> makes fun of me. I'm just so enthusiastic to take the air out and start doing things. Pretty much anything you do on your suspension, the first step is recording your settings. So on this one, I don't think we have to turn those so we can leave them be. Is that correct? They say that it makes it easier to slow the rebound all the way down as you're putting it back on. So you maybe want to do that. Like 154 to me? No, 158. That's though after it has filled up the hose of the shock. Yeah, so. so maybe put it up to like 170, disconnect it and connect it again and see how much that does. Because it's such a small volume, the yeah. can, that the amount that filled up the hose took up a lot. 170? No. Yeah. So if that's at 170, Sid's now gonna release it. And see how much was in the hose. and then put it back on. 155, so 170, that's 15, so 158 plus 15 is going to be your air pressure. All right. Excellent. Now you can release the air pressure. Finally. <laughs> Let me have a little fun around here. Ugh, it always smells like dead mouse. Now I'm completely clueless. Basically, this can 
just unscrews. Like this is the intersection right no there. Way. So you literally That's just grab wild. it and unscrew it. It's gonna be yeah, hard. This is one of those. Just just unscrew it. Just unscrew That's it. what all the other tutorials on oh, YouTube oh. say. You got okay, it. Actually, this might actually Dang. be a just unscrew. <laughs> I feel like usually when there are like suspension tutorials that are like, just undo this bolt, like, you know you're in trouble. <laughs> yeah. They are lying to you. Yeah. It's like, they just cry lie. for three days and then undo the bolt. <laughs> this is actually fine. <gasps> okay, I didn't expect <laughs> that to happen. All right, um, whew, adrenaline rush. All right, what do we do? Now you're just cleaning everything really, really well. Clean, 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 clean. This is all like, uh, there's no dirt in here. I feel kind yeah. of comfortable with just wiping it out. I think they like, part of it is you want to get some of the grease and stuff off because you're gonna put clean gotcha. grease in. So yeah. I probably would use rubbing alcohol or non chlorated Blake cleaner and just wipe everything down really well. Ooh, a little bit more than I wanted. Is it rubbing alcohol? It's isopropyl alcohol. I, don't know if that's I think they're the same thing. Okay, so I have thoroughly cleaned everything here. Very clean, very spick span. Wow, there's so many different things. Are yep. there that many on there? No. I don't think you do all of those. You do want one these, these guys, yep. two of them actually. Two of these, okay. And then there's one that's a size that will fit in between those two, like an O-ring. This one? I think it's probably the next O-ring. This, like this that guy? guy. I feel like on. this is an O-ring, this is something else. Okay, fair enough. So that's gonna go like that, okay. essentially. Yeah. Uh, sorry, not in, like it goes in between them like this. Sure, okay. So first we gotta get these off. So far so good. That one's gonna have to stretch. Yeah, and you can use a pokey tool, you just wanna be real careful. Yeah, I think I can get it without, oh, nice. so we'll go for fingers. Uh-oh. Don't mix your ones. See which one seems like it has it's oil on the outside, yeah. yeah. So this shock actually seems like it's pretty good condition. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I kinda thought it would be dirtier given what you've put it through, but. Well, I suspect the fluid has broken down somewhat. So we replace that with slick oleum? Uh, yes, and I would probably put the black one in first. Okay. It'll just be easiest, I think. Whoop, hello. <laughs> I didn't think this was that watery. I guess it's because it was cold the last time we were using this. <laughs> Actually, no, I put it in a container last time like a smart person. This time I am living on the wild side. Okay. Whoops, so that didn't go. The wild side didn't pay off for me. <laughs> okay. Let's be slightly less klutzy this time. Bing, Excellent. bing, well bang, bang. I think I have enough residual halt on my fingers. This is never gonna come off. I can see how this is gonna go. The slick oleum, you'll just have slick oleum hands forever. Yeah. Okay, I can think of worse things. It's a cat hair. There's an O-ring at the very top of that. On the edge, you'll probably, you'll need a tool for mm -hmm. it. Yeah. On the outer can part. Yeah, so just once again, very care, there you go very carefully because you don't want to oh yeah this is a tricky one there, there you go. go nice remember that you can break the things that you were taking out you just don't want to break what's staying in so if you have to break something choose wisely i did this thing again where i put it down with the new yeah. ones that's a bad thing i did a bad thing i'm just gonna use the dull end of this to no, it doesn't want to go yeah, good call. Yeah, we'll rotate it. Wow, this is so much better. <laughs> Just like your reminder today to use the tools that are available to you yeah. in life. Yeah. Whether that's, well, fixing bikes or if you want to take it like more metaphorically, that's up to you. Okay, beautiful. Uh oh, my finger's stuck. Okay, <laughs> we're good. So that is all of this part. Yeah. Now you move to the can. Oh, yeah. So yeah, that right there that you're touching this. is a dust wiper. Yes. You know how the forks have really dust wipers? I enjoyed getting those out last time. This is already going better. Oh yeah, and there's, there's dust. Dust was wiped. Okay, and so those guys, what they said is you can use a pokey tool. Okay. You just want to be careful not to scratch the edges. I'm ruining this o-ring, but that's okay because we're... Nice. These, I think I can get out with my fingers. I'm not sure those ones have... They're circular. They're, they're, yeah, they're fully there. circular, so you have to... This is definitely the challenging part. Maybe use the other side of the tool and like sure. 
try to pull it in like you did with that middle one. I'm just scared of coming off and going yeah. into the other side, but we're getting there. There you go. One down. Okay. Not too bad. Slightly stressful, but we, we did it. So how would you recommend putting these in? What I've seen done is when you put it in, you squeeze it like yeah, this. Yeah, and then it just pops and in. Like, bloop, and let go and it pops back Which out into like place. Probably a skill. Yeah. Not sure how this is gonna go. You think I bent it too much? No, because the basically the other ones will fit and it'll hold all of them in place, so. Okay, but how do we get the other ones in? Well, I guess this one's going under. I decided it wanted to be an under one. God darn it. There she goes. All right. All right, well, it went under, which... Fine. Yeah, we might live to regret <laughs> that. I would definitely suggest not having the bottom one as your last one. So I don't know, top one might not be better. And it's in there now, so I'm hardly gonna take it out. <laughs> this is like... An exercise in frustration. I don't know, I was trying to think of an accurate, something to do with a soaped pig. Wrestling a grease pig? Yeah. Let me guess, Fake box guy on YouTube just plops him in there. Yep, pretty much. I don't believe it. I'm getting frustrated. It's okay, you've got this. You to make it slightly less grease pig like. We're getting there. Good job. I'm not sure we were doing that right, but we got there in the end. Yeah. I might put some more slick oleum grease on there just because why not? Well, because all of it's on me now and not on the. <laughs> so I yeah. think you have now replaced the necessary things. Let's get this cat hair off. It's seriously a problem, guys. Jack is shedding so much. All right, you've got all those things on. Now you need your dust wiper in. Well, this is a cakewalk compared to the, <laughs> yeah, you know, went, overdid it. A little Great. slick honey happy. Okay, so now we have to put it back together, which I'm not gonna lie, I'm pretty concerned about. Put a little bit of float fluid on these guys and rub it in, and then on the seal inside and rub it in also. for this, because you have to really like get in it with the float fluid. I wonder how much pressure this is under since we're at 9,000 feet of elevation. Bed. Seen worse with my toothpaste. Okay, so the dust wipers get some. Uh, no, the stuff, the okay. seal's right underneath the dust wiper. Like here? Yeah. How much? Just a tiny bit and you rub it around. Slightly more than a tiny bit. Yeah, you really gotta get in there with it. And then same thing on this guy right here. A little bit, rub it around. More? No, nah, that's probably. I thought we needed two cc's. First you put the can okay. part way on, then you fill the can. Ah, that's where the two goes. Okay, yes. so I, that's why I was putting so much on. Okay, so we just gotta like line this up so everybody's happy and then these kind of like to poke out. So give them a, well, that was fine. Nice, nice. Then, there you Jesus. go, nice. That was scary. Okay, and then we put in two then cc's in. here. Okay. Two fifths ish of that container. Were they measuring this? No, he just squeezed. More. A little bit more. <laughs> Ooh. How about that amount? <laughs> yeah, how about that amount? Slow the rebound all the way down. Okay, so that's all the way minus, right? Uh, no, all the way plus. I ended that out, I'm supposed to know that by now. <laughs> Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, eleven. 11 from open. Closed. You just closed it all the way. I thought I was, yeah, okay. Hold on, I need to wrap my head around that. It's plus, because you're adding dampening. Damping. <laughs> <laughs> the internet will make fun of you. <laughs> um, you're adding damping, because yep. you're closing the hole, and we want it to be closed. Because so I think that was why I was confused. I thought you said we wanted it. To no, you want it to be as slow as possible because then you when you like push this up, okay. it's going to stay up. Basically, as yeah. long as you can get it to catch, Ooh, now try twist, twisting it. This is crooked. So how do I fix it? You stick an Allen key in it and just twist. 
because it took so much force to push it back together, Sid decided that she was going to take advantage of leverage and just put the shock back on the bike. So you can see it hasn't actually screwed in yet. Yeah. So she's gonna attach it and then just compress the suspension and then she should be able to screw it back on. Well, that was really, real easy comparatively. The only bummer is it's like a little annoying to get your hands in here. At this point, you don't need to be compressed anymore because it's you've got some threads in. Well, I gotta reach it though. Kind of tiring on the hands, I'm not gonna lie. Okay, does this just spin forever or does nope, it get you're, tight? you're getting there. Okay, I can't get it any farther, so it's good. All right, so at this point, we are going to air it back up and put the rebound back to, it goes one, whoa, two, three, four. Okay, so you put your rebound back to 11 and then we will air it back up. And make sure the bolts are tight. Which they aren't. And this is how to do an air can service in one minute. Remove the shock from your bike and place in a vise. Record the air pressure, then remove the air. Now unscrew the air can. For safety, you can put a rag through the end of the shock to keep the can from exploding off like this one did. Remove the seal and rings from the shock damper and clean with isopropyl alcohol. Now install the new seal and rings with a bit of slick honey. Use a pick to remove the o-ring and install the new one with some more slick honey. Now remove the dust wiper, seal, and rings, making sure not to scratch the walls of the can if using a pokey tool. Now clean the can with isopropyl alcohol and install install the new rings and seal with slick honey. Then install the new dust wiper. Coat the seals with a bit of float fluid and slide the air can onto the damper. Now add two cc's of float fluid to the air chamber and try to screw the air can back into place. If you can't, reattach the shock and compress the rear suspension, then screw it in. Now set your shock settings back to their previous state and air it up, making sure to equalize the positive and negative air chambers as you add pressure. Thank mm -hmm. you.